ask the Lord tonight, if we were a ship, we would definitely be leaning to the right <laughs> tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. And <laughs> you're just keeping us, keeping us a little leveled up. Um, is that an East Side joke? Uh, okay. Um, so, East Side Pride. <laughs> um, what about it? Not, I'm an East Sider now too. I, I can't say well, anything. No, 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 no. I don't. I, I guess I, I, not, I know. I'm not allowed to say that, am I? We live in the suburbs. Good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. Glad everybody could come and join us, gather together. Uh, does anybody have any prayer requests or testimonies you want to start with tonight? Anybody? Tony. I got a little one. Uh, I just had the privilege of running my vehicle and uh, through the bank and everything. And then I had my brakes run. And the first couple of days when I had my brakes run, the checks at the bank were giving me Extended warranty advertisement, and I was looking at all the all the little things and the amounts that it had on there, and it was almost exact amounts, almost to the dollar in the transmission of what I had done. Wow! Wow! It was just an advertisement. It wasn't, and I just sat there. I mean, I didn't say anything to the to the banker, but I just laughed my ass off. And I hope that they got this fixed soon. Praise the Lord. Back on the road. On the road. <laughs> yeah, praise yeah. the Lord.
I'm just thankful. This week has been a tough week for me, and it's been a tough week in a good way because it's part of the new responsibility I have through, you know, my, my recent sort of non-promotion promotion that's hopefully going to turn into a promotion <laughs> at work. And, you know, when you first get promoted, you can't, you're not quite at the level you need to be to really master where that next level is. And so I've just, I've been praying a lot, and I thought, Lord, you know, you are giving me favor. You are going to give me the wisdom. You are going to protect me. You're going to bring to remembrance the things that aren't going to be right in this situation and protect my clients and, and everything going on. And I mean, I think this week we sold like $80 million worth of bonds for two different clients. And that's a lot of responsibility and that's a lot of pressure. And there's things that you don't know what you don't know kind of thing. And so I'm just thankful that um, the Lord gives us favor, but he doesn't put us in a situation and then leave us there to figure it out on our own. He gives us the wisdom. He gives us the tools that we need and the grace that we need for every situation that we're in. So I'm, I'm really thankful that, you know, I, I'm surrounded by people that listen, you know, and, and are open. And um, the office environment has changed so much from when I started there 10 years ago, and I can't help but think that the Lord's doing that. Amen. And he's doing it through me to, awesome. to everybody in the office. And it's just a place where... I don't know. It's just different. It's so different from where I started. It's almost hard to imagine the same. I mean, we're doing, I'm doing performance reviews for our staff, and it's all positive. It's all good. Like you're saying, there's so much peace, and there's so much. People people tell me how they just can't, they can't believe how much they just get up in the pool to come into work, and that's just the Lord to take the negativity out, to take the stress out, to take, you know, all of that stuff, deal with it. I didn't have to do a thing. It worked itself out. I didn't have to. I didn't have to confront anything. I didn't have, I just, I was just faithful. I did the best with what I had where I was at the time and it's all been taken care of and the Lord has made the way and he does that in everything in our lives. And I just want to give him the glory and just thank him <laughs> for his favor um, and his blessings in Jesus' name. Yeah. Anybody else tonight? Any needs? All right, well, let's stand and invite the Lord in here tonight. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful, Lord, that you, you have, you know the end from the beginning, Lord, that you know every step we're going to take. You know those divine appointments that wait for us every day, that you've laid out in our path. If we'll follow after you, Lord, if we'll be led by your Holy Spirit, Lord, that we're releasing your kingdom into this world, Lord. We're releasing truth and life into the lives of the people around us and into this city itself. We thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. We thank you for your favor. We thank you that you make a way where there seems to be no way. We thank you, Lord, that you see something in us that we don't even see sometimes ourselves. But you press us, you push us forward, you encourage us, Lord. You encourage us to grow and to trust you, Lord. And you never fail us. Tonight we celebrate who you are, Lord. We celebrate your favor. We celebrate your mercy, your grace, and your goodness, Lord, that you have poured out in each of our lives. Tonight we pray for the members of this body who couldn't join us tonight, Lord, for whatever reason, Lord. Work, busyness, home, tired, schedules, kids, whatever it might be, Lord. Be with them tonight, Lord. Let them know that they are missed when we gather together in this house, Lord. And wherever they are, touch their hearts tonight. Let them know that you are near, Lord, that you care, and that you are preparing the path before them every single day. And put a hunger in all of our hearts, Lord to seek your kingdom first above all else. And when we put our eyes and focus our eyes on you, Lord, that you make the impossible possible, Lord, that you make the way you open the doors and you guide us and lead us in victory. We gather tonight in your name in this house, this house of prayer, this safe place, Lord, where we gather together to lift up your name, to worship you, to listen and study your word together, Lord, to be transformed and renew our minds. We, can, we ask you to continue. We look to the north and the south and the east and the west. Lord, draw the people in, Lord, that are missing. Draw the missing members of this body into this house, Lord. And tonight we ask a special blessing for our pastor and his wife and their family, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Bless them. Give them rest. Give them peace. Give them supernatural provision in every need that they have in their lives, Lord. Perfect health, Lord. Let their lives be a testimony that you are more than enough. You are more than enough, Jesus. You are more than enough. And as we gather tonight, as we worship, and as we lift up your name, we just say that you are worthy. 
And we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. You know, we have a couple announcements. You brought a cell phone with you tonight. Just a reminder to please silence it or turn it off. Friday night. Okay, Friday night is a concert. Uh, there are six tickets still available that Sarah, um, Sarah bought and just gave to whoever wants to come. Um, if anybody wants to pay for their ticket, we're going to take that as a goodwill off offering and put it to the women's ministry. But she purchased those tickets to give to whoever wants to join us Friday night. Um, the doors open at 6. It's at the Community Choice Credit Union. I have the tickets with me tonight if you'd like to go. Uh, anybody here um, would like to go, I have the tickets with me. I can give you your tickets, and we'll just meet up there. We'll try and find each other. I think everybody is connected on Facebook or one way or another, so we can find each other. Um, doors open at 6. I'll probably be there by 5.30 at the latest to get in line, um, and we'll try and find each other and sit together. So find me after the service if you'd, li if you'd like to come. It doesn't move when I just look at it. <laughs> uh, financial peace. Michael and I got our books in the mail. We signed up. We're super excited to um, see what the Lord has for us in the area of finance. The Lord has blessed us. We want to be good stewards of what he blesses us with, whether it's a penny or whether it's a dollar, whether it's a thousand. Amen. We want the Lord to bless it, and we want his wisdom in managing our finances. So um, there are um, some grants, I will say grants available. I know that there are um, provisions for the materials for people that want to come that may not be able to have the $100 for the books. Um, talk to Roberto. I think there were at least three, um, three if not more. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, praise God. Anybody that wants to come, don't miss out. We, we have to let Roberto know what happens next. <laughs> yes. Roberto is spearheading us. He'll be um, actually being the one that does the um, coursework with us. He'll be, what do I call that? Um, the facilitator. Facilitator. Thank you, honey. That's the big word I was looking for. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's take an offering. Um, Ron, you're already standing. You want to come take an offering tonight? Uh, Outstanding. <laughs> I'm having an out-of-body experience. I don't know where my brain is and my mouth is there. I'm not connected tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord.
nowhere else we'd rather be, Lord, than in your presence. In your presence, you restore us, Lord. In your presence, you encourage us, Lord. In your presence, we are truly one with you, Lord. Jesus, you are worthy to be praised, Lord. What a joy it is to worship you, Lord, to know you, to be one with you, Lord. Jesus' name. Thanks, James. Praise the Lord. That is one of my favorite songs. It's so simple. It's so simple, but I think I love your presence. I love your presence, Lord. I love your presence, Lord. I love his presence. So thankful that when we gather together, he is here. I'm so thankful that every moment that I turn my eyes to him, he is there. I'm so thankful that when I'm not paying attention, when I'm not even aware of it, he is there. He never leaves us and he never forsakes us. So thankful for that. So we have been talking a lot about who we are in Christ, understanding who we are. We have to know who we are. Who are we? We're one with Jesus Christ. We are the body of Jesus Christ. We are the salt and the light of this world. We are one with Jesus Christ. And as Nathan was preaching Sunday, a thought struck me that I'd never really thought about before, and maybe everybody else here has thought about it, but I had never thought about it before, and I thought, if we are one with Jesus Christ, why don't I pray like he does? Come on. Have I ever stopped and not thought about what I want to tell him, but looked at how he prayed to his father? Because mm -hmm. they were one, and he's our example. And so, he didn't pray like I pray. We don't have a lot of details about exactly how Jesus prayed and what he prayed, but we have a lot of... Um, Hints, I will call it that. We have a lot of hints, right? We weren't privy to his private conversations with the Lord, but we know um, some bits and pieces that he shared with his disciples because they asked him the same thing. Lord, how do we pray? You go off all the time by yourself. How do we pray, Lord? Teach us how to pray. And so first I want to go through some scriptures thinking about how did Jesus pray? What did Jesus pray? Where did Jesus pray? When did Jesus pray? Matthew 14, 23. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. He prayed by himself, right? Yep. And this was after ministry. When he had... When he had poured out everything he had left, when he had given everything that God had poured into him, he said, I need some time alone with my father. Mark chapter 6, verse 46. And when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. Now a mountain is somewhere set apart, somewhere you got to climb to get to, right? Mm -hmm. So I was thinking about that. We have mountains in our lives that we want to pray away. But maybe, just maybe, we got to go to the mountain and pray. Instead of praying them away sometimes, we just go right to the root of it and we pray right there. Luke 6, chapter, uh, Luke chapter 6, verse 12. And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. All night. Even when I was young, going to slumber parties, having a good time, I was never the one that could stay up all night. I was the first one that fell asleep. You know, they put shaving cream in your hand, they draw your eyebrows, all that stuff when you're young. But he said, in this case, he spent all night in prayer with the Lord. There was something that he was having an in-depth discussion with the Lord about. There was something either in himself 
or something that was in the Father that he didn't see in himself, that he said, Lord, it might take us all night, but we're gonna, we're, I'm going to just sit with you. I'm going to stay with you in prayer, and I'm going to be with you, Father, until you and I, until I look just like you, and I'm doing exactly what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Mark chapter 1, verse 35. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, before the dawn, he went out and departed into a solitary place, and there he prayed. Now, my husband, can I get an amen? I am not a morning person. I am not a morning person. But how, how many of you get woken up in the middle of the night, and you just can't go back to sleep, and you don't know why? Maybe it's time to go pray. Maybe there's something that we don't even know what we're going to pray. We, that's why we have tongues, right? We don't have to understand what we're praying. We don't have to have knowledge sometimes of what we're praying, but sometimes we need to pray. And sometimes early in the morning, if there's something that I, and, and there's sometimes there's things that keep us up, right? There's sometimes that we just can't sleep because there's something going on that we're wrestling with. And it doesn't look like the word. It doesn't look like the promise. It doesn't look like the word. So you know what? We better get up and we better pray, right? Uh, so let's go to Luke chapter 9, verse 18. A solitary place. I want to say that. Solitary place. When, when we're struggling, we want to we want to call somebody, we want to tell somebody, we want to reach out to somebody to say, "Come pray with me, to, listen to me, help, listen to me while I vent, listen to me while I tell you about how bad it is for me, listen to me for a second. But sometimes we need to go get alone, and stop the negativity coming from our mouth, and stop saying the things like they are, and start listening to what God says is, not what they are that we're seeing with our eyes, but the truth of what it is, the reality in which we live. And it came past as he was alone praying, again, all by himself. His disciples were with him. And he asked them, saying, whom say the people that I am? So, they, so now the disciples are starting to tag along. In this case, they're with him, and he's praying. And he's like, all right, you guys want to come pray with me? You, you think you're praying like I'm praying. Who do they say I am? Who do you say you are when you're praying? There's, there's a posture and a position that Jesus had when he prayed with the Father. Not saying, Lord, help me. Not saying, no, I don't, even want to, I don't know what he said. I can't, I can't put words in his mouth. But I, I just have a feeling that I pray a whole lot different than how Jesus prayed. I'm asking God to fix it, fix the situation, fix another person. But my prayer should be, Lord, let me be a perfect reflection of who you are. Fix me. Fix me. And so my prayers, when I'm, when I'm praying for another person, I, I, I don't, well, I'll get to that in a second. But anyway, so Lord, don't fix it. So, so, so I'm saying, like, when Jesus went, he said, I only do what I see my father doing. I only say what I hear my father saying. I only, you know, how did he know what his father was saying? How did he know what his father was doing? Because he got all by himself. He went up into the mountains to make sure no one would disturb him. He went to the hard places, the mountain, right, to the hard places all by himself. When he had poured out everything he had and was probably exhausted, staying up all night until he had what was necessary from his father, what he knew exactly who he was, what he was sent to do, what the father's work was so that he could do it. He stayed until he knew who he was, where he was going, and what he was doing. And he didn't leave until he was sure. Because he had a whole lot of people around him that did nothing but take, 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 need, 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 right? right? How many of us in our lives get a little frustrated when everybody's take, 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 need, need, need? We are the vessel that overflows grace. That is our job, is to give, 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 give. And it is exhausting if we don't go back all by ourselves and get back and say, Lord, fill me up. There is such a great need all around me. Fill me up. Heal. We get dry, right? When, when, when the water's all poured out, it gets dry. Oh, is it dry in this land right now? We need rain, and this sprinkles aren't cutting it. We need some rain, Lord, some downpour, just like we do. When we pour out, pour out, pour out, and we don't ask God to pour back in, we get dry, and we get bitter, and that's when things go really wrong. And, and ministry can be habit. Ministry can be habit for us because we know what to do. We know what to say. We know what it looks like. But if it's God, it's not ministry, right? 
It's not habit. There's something exchanged. There's something given away. There's something that I, I, I can't even possess it, but I can give it away. Because it just pours through us, right? Mm -hmm. Matthew 26, verse 36. Whom do people say that I am? Jesus asked that of his disciples, and he's asking that of us. Who do people say that I am? Who do people say that you are? Because we and Jesus are one now. Am I asking myself, who do people say that I am? What do they say about me? Do they even know I'm a Christian? Do they, do they know... My, they, do they know him by my fruit? You know, who do they say I am? Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the, unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray on her. Now we know how this night went. We know how this night went. Just sit here. He didn't ask him, just be close by, because tonight's going to be a really tough night for me. My father is asking me to do something that I don't know if I can do. I don't know if I can do it. If there's any way that this cup can pass, Lord, will you just please, my friends, my brothers, come sit with me? How many of us in our lives want someone to just come sit with us and they don't understand? They, they, they don't understand what we're going through. They don't understand what we're really asking. And quite frankly, some of them just aren't capable because there's only one person that got Jesus through that night. And it's the same person that's going to get us through those dark nights. Because those dark nights happen in our lives, don't they? Those dark nights happen. We're in a fallen world. They're going to happen. And there's only one that's going to get you through the dark night. And he's a lover of your soul. Go read the Song of Solomon about that dark night. And you'll learn that he is a lover. That story of the dark night is about a husband and a wife for a reason. There's only one that's going to get us through the dark night. And that's our father. Our Heavenly Father is the only one we can turn to. We, we, we can surround ourselves with people, with, with our church body, people who believe with us, people who, who know what we know, who have listened to our words, who know our story, who know us, who know our heart, who know how much we love the Lord. But they can't do what our Father in Heaven can do. Right. Only He can get us through the dark night. Amen. Right? So even the disciples that lived and walked daily with Jesus... They spent all that time with him. And they said, Matthew 6, uh, verses 5 through 15. I'm going to read this whole section. Oh, I guess I didn't do that. Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 through 15. And when thou, uh, uh, yeah, so the disciples said, Lord, teach us how to pray. Teach us how to pray. We see you going off all by yourself all the time. We don't get to hear what you're saying. What are you saying over there? Can you teach us? Teach us, Lord, because we want to do the things you're doing. We want to we be just like you, Lord. We, wanna, we, want, we, want our, we want people to just touch the hem of our garment and they're healed when we walk by. Teach us, Lord. Teach us how to pray. And this is what he said to him. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. I'm a verbose person. I like words. <laughs> I don't do it to show off, but I pray with a lot of words. It's not necessary. It's not necessary. Be healed is the same thing as a five-minute long prayer of shouting and hooping and hollering. It's the same thing, Right? So he's saying, if that's your reason for doing it, you're getting your reward for everybody watching. That's all you're going to get out of it. But thou, when thou prayest, you, my disciples, who know the truth, when you pray, enter into your closet. That's that place alone, right? That's that alone place. Solitude. And when you shut the door, pray to your Father, which is in secret, and the Father, which seeth you in secret, shall reward you openly. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. And now that's talking about all the, the temples and the yuck -de yuck and I'm sure some Jews in there and everything, but shouting, right? Shouting, shouting, shouting. Pentecostals are sometimes a little guilty of that. It looks spiritual, right? It looks spiritual if you're shouting and jumping and halting and hooting and hollering and shaking and laying it and falling on the floor. I, how, many, 
many have been pushed if you weren't slain in the spirit? How many of you have been pushed? I got pushed in the forehead because I didn't fall down. I wasn't having a spiritual enough response. And I was like, I know they just didn't push me. Oh, they pushed me because they were praying and, it, and I wasn't reacting the way they wanted me to. I didn't know there was a way you're supposed to react. I was receiving the prayer. I didn't know what the ministry looked like, right? Be not ye therefore like unto them. Don't worry about what it looks like. Don't worry about what it sounds like. You know, sometimes the kids are like, well, I don't know how to pray. Kids downstairs, they want to pray, they ask for prayer, but they don't know how. I, ask the, I try to get them to pray in class. Why don't you pray? I don't know what to say. I don't know how to pray. It's not hard. You use your words. You talk to a friend, right? Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask. Right? So what are we spending our time in? I mean, if I think about the time I spend praying, what's going on in that conversation? How much? First of all, how much am I talking? And second of all, how much am I listening? Because that's supposed to be a two-way conversation. Right. Prayer is a two-way conversation. And I tell you what, I, my personality, I automatically do more talking than listening. And my husband can get an amen back there. I do more talking than listening. That's my personality. I am I'm an outward. I'm an external extrovert, right? I'm an extrovert. So I think out loud. It means I'm like, blah, 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 as I'm thinking about it. I don't, I don't know. I'm just making no sense to anybody, but I'm thinking about it, but I say it out loud. I talk really fast. You guys have listened to, <laughs> listened to me teach enough. You know, I talk really fast because that's how my mind goes even faster, believe it or not. You wouldn't want to be up here. It's pretty scary. My mind goes faster than my mouth, and my mouth goes pretty fast. <laughs> But Jesus said, after this manner, doesn't matter what anybody else does, doesn't matter what anybody else says, don't look around you. Jesus says, I'm going to tell you. After this manner, therefore pray you, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. Now, I left that in there. It's not part of the Lord's Prayer, but I thought it was interesting that he went right into that. That's exactly what he talked about right after that. And so... I'm going to read part of this out of the Message Bible because I like plain talk, and the Message Bible cracks me up sometimes because it's just it's a different twist on scriptures we know so well sometimes that it makes it fresh and new for us. So, And when you come before God, don't turn into a theatrical production either. All these people making a regular show out of their prayers, hoping for stardom. How many of our Christian personalities? Mm -hmm. Right? Some on purpose, some not so much. TBN's pretty hard for me to watch anymore. <laughs> anyway, um, do you think God sits in a box seat? Here's what I want you to do. Find a quiet, secluded place so you won't be tempted to role play before God. Just be there as simply and honestly as you can manage. The focus will shift from you to God, and you will begin to sense his grace. The world is full of so-called prayer warriors who are prayer ignorant. That's why I'm studying this tonight, because I am prayer ignorant, folks. They're full of formulas and programs and advice, peddling techniques for what they want you, from what you want, from for, for advice and peddling techniques for getting what you want from God. Don't fall for that nonsense. This is your father you're dealing with, and he knows better than you what you need. When a God like this loving you, you can pray very simply like this. Our Father in heaven, reveal who you are. Set the world right. Do what's best. As above in heaven, so below. Keep us alive with three square meals. Keep us forgiven with you and forgiving others. Keep us safe from ourselves and the devil. You are in charge. You can do anything you want. You're ablaze in beauty. Yes, yes, yes. In prayer, there is a connection between what God does and what you do. You can't get forgiveness from God, for instance, without also forgiving others. 
If you refuse to do your part, you cut yourself off from God's part. And when you practice some appetite-denying discipline to better concentrate on God, fasting, he's talking about fasting, don't make a production out of it. It might turn you into a small-time celebrity, but it won't make you a saint. If you go into training inwardly, act normally, normal outwardly. Shampoo and comb your hair, brush your teeth, wash your face. God doesn't require attention-getting devices. He won't overlook what you're doing. He'll reward you well. So I kind of broke down the Lord's Prayer and thought I'd just go through it a little bit at a time. This is kind of how I thought what he's really trying to tell us in each little piece, right? Our Father who art in heaven, focus on and look up to me where your help comes from. Hallowed be thy name. Reveal all that you are in me and in this world. Mm -hmm. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Teach me your ways, Lord. Help me to put your kingdom first, to understand the truth of your word, and release all that you are in this world. I am the conduit transferring heaven to earth. Give us this day our daily bread. Every day is a gift that you have given us, Lord. Let us be wholly reliant upon you to provide for our every need. Let us take no thought for what we will eat or what we will wear. Let us focus on you, releasing your kingdom so that your purposes can be achieved for this day. You are the bread of life. We feast upon you and find our satisfaction and our strength in you and you alone. Forgive our debt as we forgive our debtors. Help us to rely on and trust in your total and complete grace. Help us to let go of our own personal failures, our shortcomings, in our insecurities that hold us back and help us to see other people through your eyes. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Help us, Lord, to say, stay single-minded and focused on truth and on life. May we not be led astray and distracted by our unrenewed mind, by our unbelief, or by other people. Help us to speak the truth to stand when the enemy comes so that he will flee. Give us wisdom and discernment to know when to stand and how to take authority. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. It's all about you, Lord. Yes. It's all for the glory of your kingdom. Amen. So be it, Lord. My soul says yes, yes, yes. It is finished. Now, as I think about all of that, I don't recall one instance where Jesus, where someone came to Jesus with a need, and they, and they were, I don't know, any example of where he healed somebody, that they came with a need, and, and, and he said, what do you need? And, and they said, I want to, I'm blind. I want to see. Open my eyes. Did he say, Father, if it's your will, open these blind eyes. I don't remember him ever saying, if it's your will, Father. He didn't pray that way. Right. Some mud. Open your eyes. That's how Jesus prayed. Mm -hmm. And as I think about this, there's some things that we're praying about that we should be proclaiming over. There's some things that we don't have to ask the Father to do. He says, you go do my works. Jesus said, you will do my works, and greater than these things shall you do. So why are we praying and asking, Lord, heal this man? Why aren't we speaking to the sickness and the disease that we have authority over by the blood of Jesus Christ? He never asked his father when laying hands on the sick. He spoke truth and life into the face of sickness and disease and even into the face of death itself. Even before he died and rose again, he spoke to death and said, Life, come, Lazarus, come forth. Shouldn't we be doing the same thing? Yep. In John, 14, uh, John chapter 14, verse 12, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. 
And he has sent back the Holy Spirit to dwell in us, which is the dunamis power of, the, of God, of God Almighty, that God had dwelleth in us. So what were his works? Power, signs, and wonders. Right? We are to be like Jesus. Now, there were, I'll just call them four kinds of miracles that Jesus did as examples. And I just printed them all out and color coded them because I like to make pretty graphs and charts. Um, we have authority over nature, right? We have authority over nature. Jesus walked on the water. He turned water into wine. He fed 5,000 plus women and children by simply holding up some fish and some bread and blessing it. All he did was bless it. He didn't even pray. So, so when we bless something, what, what, what does it say in Genesis? Be blessed and multiply. When we bless something, we should expect multiplication. Multiply. Bless it. Bless it. This is blessed. Jesus walks on the water. He withered the fig tree from the root up. He spoke to a fig tree. He caught massive amounts of fish twice. He pulled the taxes that were owed out of the fish's mouths. Who needs some tax money out of the fishes? We are to speak. We have authority over the natural world. And this natural world is set to produce to bless us. For our needs, to meet our needs. Deliverance. Four times Jesus, he drove out evil spirits from a man in Capernaum. He cast demons into a herd of pigs. He healed a Gentile woman's demon-possessed daughter. He heals a boy with an unclean spirit. We need some discernment. Sometimes we're praying for healing when we need to cast some things out. Yep. Our discernment has become dull because we just pray and throw it up and let the Lord deal with it. He said, no, you deal with it. I have given you everything, and I've given you wisdom, and I've given you the scriptures, and I've given you examples so you know what these things look like. The mental health things that we're dealing with, with the people I think of Deborah particularly, Alvin, that's, that needs, that's, some, that's some evil spirits that needs to be cast out. That is not a sickness or a disease. That is a spirit that is robbing the mental health of our people. The voices that people hear that, that talk to them and, and mock them, those are spirits that need to be cast out. They need to be sent into the swines. Healing. I, you know, I, this has been something that's been in my spirit for so long now. When people come for prayer, when we ask for prayer, Jesus asked people. He looked them in the eyes. He said, tell me what you want. Tell me what your need is. What do you want? What do you want from me? And we're just so ready to pray that we don't see if they're ready to receive. Right. These people came to Jesus ready for their miracle. Mm -hmm. And are we, are we, are, are, and I, I don't even know how, I don't, I'm just talking. <laughs> I don't know how this all works. I'm not an expert. I don't, I haven't seen a lot of people healed when I prayed for them. I've seen it in my, my, in my spirit, but I haven't seen it manifest. So I'm not an expert in all in the healing ministries, but I want to be. And so I'm asking the Lord for wisdom. How do we pray? And I have been struck by the fact that he would tell people, What's your need? Tell me what you need. Or people would come to him knowing their needs, so desperate, but they knew he was the answer. How many people in our lives know that we're their answer? That if they come to us and ask for prayer, it's finished. It's done. So I, let's agree that we just all need to pray about that. I don't have answers, but that's something I'm praying about, to look people in the eye. And I remember the, there was a time where we had a bunch of people, and they had come forward for prayer, and I felt compelled to ask them, what, what do you need? What do you need? And I looked at him. I said, tell me what you need. And crying. And her heart was ready. Yeah. Her heart was ready. And I believe she got what she was asking for that day. Amen. And raising people from the dead. Three times Jesus raised people from the dead. This is before he had destroyed death, hell, and the grave. He has given us the keys of the kingdom. Right. There should, we should walk by cemeteries and the grave should be popping open. Mm -hmm. I mean, greater works, church. I'm not hungry for the signs and wonders. I'm hungry to walk in the power that he has told us that we are to walk in. Right. He has given us wisdom. He has given us revelation. And I believe yeah. now is the time for us to walk in the power that he has promised us. Yeah. And so I'll close with this. Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 11. Peter and John... In Acts, right? This was after Jesus ascended, after 
Pentecost came, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And they were at a place they've been a million times. They've walked through the, the beautiful gate a million times. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look at me, look at us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something from them. And then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give, I give thee, give I thee, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now I am telling you, that is what we have. That is our inheritance. That is our, our bridal gift, our betrothal gift. What I have, do we have it? Do we have something to give when people say, I, alms? People don't, we, we see people begging on the side of the street. It's not quite the same thing, but. Do we say, look at me. I'll give you what I have. And what I have, what you need is not what you think. You don't need five bucks from me. I've got what you need. You need Jesus Christ. Now get up and prosper and go live a healthy life. You are free from addiction. You are free from disease. You are free from mental illness. I'm telling you, I have volunteered in many homeless shelters, and I'm telling you what is rampant in homeless shelters is drug addiction and mental illness. 90% of the people in homeless shelters have mental illness problems and addiction problems. 90% or more, maybe. And he took him by the right hand. He didn't just say it. Then he reached out and he said, I'm going to help you up. He took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately, his feet and ankle bones received strength. This guy's like, they brought me in in a stretcher. And you're telling me to get up? He's looking at me. What do you mean? I want money. What do you, what do you mean, get up? I can't get up. I'm laying. Did you not see me laying here? He reached out his hand. He said, get up. And he pulled him up. And when he was up, that's when he received his strength, right? And he, and, and he leaping up stood. I mean, who, who saw James here when he could leap? He was leaping through here when he, he could get his knees up for the first time in years. That was awesome. And that's what I picture. Yep. Leaping, he stood and he walked and he entered, them, entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. That's one excited man. Mm -hmm. That's one excited man. And in the temple, they're in the temple, verse 11. And as the lame man, which was healed, held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that's called Solomon's Porch, greatly wondering what is going on. Verse 12. Oh, sorry, did I not go on? I'll read it out of here. 12. Uh, let's do 12 through 16. Sorry. And when Peter saw it, he answered the people, Men of Israel, why, why marvel ye at this? Or why do you look so earnestly at us as though by our own power or holiness we have made this man walk? Now this is something I was praying about at Eastern Gate House of Prayer. Lord, how do I, how do I not, how do I stay humble? And how do I stay, I don't want to be prideful. And I don't want to think I'm special. But I am special. How do I do that? How do I know who I am and have the confidence that I am one with Jesus Christ but not be boastful and be proud? How do I do that, Lord? That's how you do it. You just know who you are and you say, look at me. How many of us would do that? Look at me. Who am I? Right? We're just whole. That's boastful. You don't want to draw attention to yourself. You're being boastful. But that's not what Peter and John did. They knew who they were. So so I'm telling you, are you ready? Are you ready to walk up to people who you know they have a need and say, look at me. I'm going to give you what I have. I'm going to give you what I have, and I'm going to give you what you need. Not what you're asking for, but I'm going to give you what you need. If he was healed, he didn't need money anymore, did he? Right. But it never occurred to him he could be healed. There so there's two examples, right? So there's two kinds of things going on here. Sometimes when people come forward, they just want to talk about their problem. They don't want to be healed. They don't, want, they don't want the problem resolved. They just want to talk about the problem. They want someone to commiserate with them. Those, or are they ready? Do they believe? Do they believe or are they just hoping? Hoping or believing, right? How do we help them? What can we do to increase their faith in Jesus Christ? Not in us, but in Jesus Christ. Because once you taste and see that the Lord is good, you know that he is good. 
So why are we not giving out free taste, right? Let people taste and see that he's good. Yeah. And then there's people who are asking for the wrong thing. I'm telling you, the church has been asking for the wrong thing. The gospel of peace is what's supposed to be on our feet. Mm -hmm. And that's what was strengthened right here. You're asking for the wrong thing, brother. You're asking for money. Money's not what you need. You need to be healed so that you can go earn a living yourself. You can have a life in that more abundantly. Yeah. Right? On. So I'm telling you, we need to take prayer seriously. And we need to pray the way Jesus prayed. Not, not um, Jesus prayed for people. He prayed for himself. Right? That, that prayer time is to say, Lord... I don't look like you. What needs to change so I look just like you? So that I have something to give. So when I can walk up to someone I see in need and say, look at me. I've got something to give you. Lord, I need you to put that in me. I need you to help me understand it. I need you to teach me how to do it. Teach me how to walk in it. Teach me how to be that. Teach me how to be you. That's how we pray. And we pray for the church. He prayed for the church, right? Father, I pray for those you've given me. The Lord has given us people in our lives to watch over, right? Yep. He's given us people to protect our families, our children, our grandchildren, our neighbors, our extended family, our friends, people, people you have a divine appointments with. That was someone that you were, that was called to. We're given people in our lives. We should pray for those people. We should pray to be aware when they come through our path, when they come through our days, right? When, when we just happenstance at the grocery store. It happens all the time, right? We hear stories at the post office, wherever it might be. When our people that he's given us to plant seeds into, when they come, we give them something of value, mm -hmm. right? And we pray for the kingdom to come, right? Yeah. So that's what I wanted to talk about tonight, how to pray, how to pray like Jesus, and remember that we are one with him. We, we need to remember what we have authority over and what we need to speak to and proclaim and what we need to pray about and who and why and what. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.